So I'm Dr. Dickon Bevington. I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist and I'm medical director at the Anna Freud National Centre for Children and Families. I'm going to speak for just a few minutes on the changes in the adolescent brain that go along with development and particularly how those changes have an impact on the behaviour of young people and I'll try to relate that to the kinds of behaviours that might crop up in schools. So there's really three areas of the brain that we're particularly interested in uh, that uh, have an impact on the kinds of behaviours that teachers might notice in school. And um, I've brought my brain with me, so I'm going to show them uh, in, in three dimensions because that helps people think about it. The first part of the brain is right in the middle, deep inside. And this part of the brain is really mature from the beginning of from birth. Uh, it's the part of the brain that deals with survival, that keeps us alive by triggering powerful emotions of fear or anger, um, or indeed of telling us that everything's going fine. The, the second part of the brain is really where everything becomes uh, active at the upper end of primary school and going into secondary school. And really what triggers the activity and the maturation of that part of the brain is the development of puberty and the hormones that are creating all kinds of other changes around the body. The most important changes, from our point of view, from behaviour, are the ones that are tri being triggered in the brain. And the area of the brain that we're interested in here is out on the sides of the brain. This is the front, if it was, if it was like that. So it's out on these, these side parts called the temporal lobes. And those parts of the brain are where we record, if you like, stories of how people ought to behave in certain situations. And around the top end of primary school, those parts of the brain are starting to look really quite mature. And they function a little bit like a radar that's scanning the world and measuring how somebody in front of me is behaving against these stories that I've now begun to gather in my brain. And it starts to matter to children as they enter adolescence as to whether people are behaving in ways that are okay or not okay. Whereas in younger years, there's a lot more flexibility for a child. They can tolerate all kinds of um, silly behaviour in a, in a parent and think that this is great. All of a sudden parents uh, become much more liable to be an embarrassment for, for an adolescent. What the adolescent struggles with is that having this, this accelerator pedal part of the brain that says, oh, there's something going on that is not according to my script, that's a little bit off how I expect things should be. And it has the, the powerful engine in the middle, this kind of survival, fight or flight part of the brain um, going on. But what the poor adolescent doesn't yet have, because it isn't fully developed, is the part at the front of the brain. We call it the prefrontal cortex. And that's the part of the brain around here that creates in us the possibility of hesitating, of pausing, of wondering, kind of doing what a, you see dogs do it too. They put their head on one side. It's like they're looking at the world from different perspectives. What if? I wonder why this person is behaving in that way. Or I wonder why I'm behaving in this way. It's a part of the brain that's about wondering, about curiosity, about trying to work out and be inquisitive about behaviour, my own or yours. And for the poor adolescent, they don't have the volume, as in turning up the volume, in, in, in the function of this part of the brain, really until it reaches adult maturity, which is probably not until 24, 25 years old. So they have this kind of mismatch that their brain is very sensitive to social cues, things that don't seem right. But what they don't have is the braking system, if you like, that would say, well, let's just stop and think about this. Let's pause and wonder whether my impulse to yell, to run out, to kind of say something very noisy, um, uh, whether that's a sensible idea or not. How might I make sense of this teacher's frown? How might I make sense of the way that these comments written in the margin of my work uh, uh, to me seem very painful and hurtful, but perhaps they weren't meant in that way. So it's this ability to keep thinking about and making sense of people's behaviour, even when they're upset, that is much more uh, 
tricky for the adolescent than it is for those of us who've managed to make it through those years and have a slightly more powerful prefrontal cortex. I suppose the other thing that I would want to really emphasise about the developmental changes in the brain that, that, that this allows is a great deal of curiosity and attention that goes to how I am in my standing with my peer group. And for adolescents, the, the influence is mostly horizontal to young people in their peer group, and much less as it is for younger children, where they're looking up at parents and teachers and authority figures. It becomes much more crucial for the adolescent, really a matter almost of life and death, that they are in right relation to their peer group. And this, of course, is one of the drivers that makes them anxious. And what we know about this part of the brain, the front part of the brain, is that it's designed to not be able to work very well when there's anxiety, because you don't want this piece of brain to work if there's a tiger coming towards you. It's, it's, it's too slow, it's too deliberative, it's too curious. You want to know with certainty. So poor adolescents are in the situation often of judging situations that are not tigers. There's somebody looking at me in a funny way or making a comment on social media that was perhaps a little clumsier than it could have been and reacting in just the same way that we are evolutionarily designed to react, but to tigers which are, which are not there. Uh, so I hope that makes some sense of why, for the young people that we work with in schools, at times their behaviour appears very uh, impulsive uh, and, and, and dramatic, um, uh, and that this is to some extent related to the developments that's going on in their brain.